The artistic process can feel very mysterious, but it's not. I find a lot of similarities with like how scientists think about things. In our work, we're trying to answer multiple questions. One of them would be a historical positioning of the artist and the way that we understand uh, the surrounding world and the environment. I really wanted to focus on unique interactions between light and matter at the micro nano scales. And the CDH Artist in Residence program invites professional uh, Swiss and international artists to present projects to be realized uh, in the framework of three months residences at the FFR. And a jury selected four uh, final projects which really span different themes from uh, light to holography uh, or exoplanets or robotics and uh, puppetry, but also AI and environmental research. So my project for EPFL is um, an investigation into exoplanets and their place within our cultural imaginary. For me, this is like a relatively new uh, part of science in general. It marks like a, a, a new shift in our uh, cultural consciousness uh, at a time when we're facing a climate crisis on this planet. I became very interested in what material made life on Earth the way it is. And I narrowed in on this specific crystal called olivine, which is a magnesium ferrosilicate that is essential in carbon sequestration cycles and plate tectonics. So then I wanted to work with the crystal growth facility here to grow olivine from a natural source. So in the lab, we are growing single crystals. So a single crystal is a, is a solid uh, in which there is a, an order of the atoms. Uh, there is symmetry in the entire volume of the, of the sample of the crystal. So the Joel he came with a powder and he said, can you make a crystal out of that powder? And what was important for him was the, the beauty of the crystal. It was a challenge for our lab because growing a crystal from a natural powder makes things more complicated because the composition is not precisely known. You know the element, you know roughly what is inside, and in the end, you can't change that. It started as an artistic project, and it finally turned to be a scientific project because we realized that uh, in the literature, there was no report of uh, olivine growth. We're going to probably publish an article on the crystal growth of olivine. I'm happy because it seems that Joel is very satisfied with the crystals that uh, we've grown for him. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm pretty sure that is going to be a very beautiful piece of art. With the project Light Oriented Ontology, I met various scientists in order to have also different perspective on different phenomena that I'm very interested in. And I really see uh, science as some sort of wonder machine in a way that really changes our perception of reality. And at the same time, I also think it needs like a close inspection somehow, and an, an external point of view on science. Since the beginning of the residency, uh, my project also yeah, evolved in many different ways, thanks to the exchanges that I had with researchers. I'm able to do such a research here at APFL with labs that operate at such small scales and observe very unique phenomena. Our uh, field is optics, imaging, even holography, various kinds of optics that uh, display colors or display form and shape. And most of the, a lot of the arts are visual arts, have to do with uh, light or images or uh, how light is, interacts with shapes and so forth. And Alan's in particular focuses exactly on this, using light or different ways light uh, transforms and uh, presents emotions or images to people. So it seemed like a match made in heaven. To me, it was a really exciting opportunity to open my lab to an artist because I think it's in human nature to create something. And us as a roboticist, we create robots. As artists, they have um, their own medium. And Ricardo had film as their medium, and I was hoping that we could meet in some place to see what we can create together. For EPFL, we propose a project with the title Synthetic Landscapes. And Synthetic Landscapes aims to look at the Western painting 
uh, as a technology that frames the landscape, frames the natural world and creates this alienation from the subject to the environment. It's very interesting to, to match people um, with the scientists that they, they want to collaborate with and to see also the project evolves. So it's not something that uh, is the typical everyday experience we, we have in the center, uh, but that's a, a very you know, fun one to be participating in. For Dorota and Egle, it was mainly about understanding uh, their vision for the project and how we could help in that. So we, we had some discussions with them and then we understood that they needed some very technical development. They needed access to a technology. So our scientific team sat down with them, understanding their needs. They look around the literature, what existed, and then they put in place a technology that could be used uh, by these two artists. We tried to see if there is another way of relating to the environment other than separating yourself in it, but somehow seeing yourself as an integral part of it. So I think these are the two main questions that we try to answer, and especially with this project. We attempt to also question in question new realities of contemporary society, contemporary developments, but we are also trying to build alternate narratives. So we're working with the artists uh, here. They're trying to produce a video uh, related to uh, climate change uh, and how it will affect uh, landscapes and scenarios in the future. And so we're trying to use a um, stable diffusion neural network model uh, in order to predict or imagine what some of these scenes may look like. What's interesting about the model that we're trying to use with them, so this uh, stable diffusion, is that it can take as an in, in input both an image or some text. So we're saying uh, we want to flood the scene or we want to add snow or a sandstorm, and we're just trying to see how stable and how uh, pleased they are with the results of what's happening. The main aim of the program is to establish a dynamic, visionary, uh, but also critical platform where artists and scientists can meet, can have a dialogue, but also can work together on specific artistic projects. And of course, the perspective is also to understand the potentiality of such an exchange, both for artists as well as for scientists.